And all of us, I know, have thought that same thing. I'm pretty much a good person. I'm trying to do my best. I try to do the right things, and yet it doesn't seem like I'm getting ahead. Why is it that so-and-so, look how blatantly ungodly they are, and yet they're getting ahead in life? That's not fair. And that's what Jeremiah was saying to God. Oh, God, why is that? That deep-seated, gut-wrenching cry of the heart that wants answers. Why? <clears throat> So number one, we have to understand as Christians, going through the scriptures, let me give you one more. This is the most powerful one of all. Matthew 27, verse 46. In fact, don't even turn there. See if you can guess who says this. Matthew 27, 46. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? We all know who said that. Jesus said that on the cross. The Son of God questioned the Father at the most unbelievably painful time in his entire life. Questioning, where are you, God? You have forsaken me. You have not rescued me from this situation. So you see, it is okay to question God. Not shaking your fist at God, angry and bitter and arrogant, but humbly pleading with God. Saying, Lord, why? Your hearts cry for answers to your situation. So number one, remember, people of God, remember this. It's okay to ask. It really is. It's okay to humbly plead before God and ask Him, Lord, why? Number two. Number one is it's okay to ask. Number two is it's not okay to get stuck there. It's not okay to stay there. To stay on why. To get stuck on why. How many times have we begged God over and over again, why, why, why? And we don't get answers. And so then we partly turn bitter and we tar partly turn angry. And bitterness and anger separate us more from the presence of God. And so if we get stuck on why, we're going to be separated more from God. And the problem will perpetuate itself. It'll get worse over time. So my thing is that, number one, yeah, as a congregation, as individual Christians, it's okay. It really is okay to ask. To ask God why. But it's not okay to stay there. It's not okay to get stuck there and to allow the problem to perpetuate. Do you know why the question why is so powerful? Do you know why it hurts so bad when your heart pleads out why? I love to be a student of the scriptures, love to be a student of particular words in the Bible. All of us probably know that the Old Testament was written in Hebrew, the New Testament was written in Greek. And you go back and you look up a word, an English word or a Tagalog word, and you look at it the way it was used in the Old Testament. And when I looked up what the word why means, have you ever thought about that? What does it mean? It's really powerful. When you go back into the Hebrew and use how the Old Testament, uh, when the word why appears there, like we read earlier with David and Job, Jeremiah, when they're saying why, the word why in Hebrew means to scream. That's so powerful to understand. No where causes so much pain. No what causes so much pain. No how causes so much pain. No who causes so much pain as the question why. Why is that? Because of its meaning. It means literally to scream. That heart's deep-seated cry for answers. And we all have that. It means to scream. That's why it hurts so bad. It's really critical you understand that. That's why it hurts so bad. Understanding is the first part of the process of healing. So number one, it's okay to ask. No problem. Number two, it's not okay to get stuck there and to continue to scream in pain, crying out to God for answers. And like I said earlier, when you do get stuck, what happens, and probably all of us happen, this happened to my, me in my own life, it happened, where there's so many whys, so many unanswered questions, so many unanswered whys, that you begin to separate yourself from God. It hurts too bad to be close, so you, you get away. But what happens is that pain perpetuates and it grows. That seed of bitterness inside of you grows to the point where it makes it more difficult to get back in fellowship and union with God. So it is okay to ask, but it's not okay to get stuck there, which leads me to number three. It really, truly is okay to let it go. 
is to let it go. To live with unanswered questions. It really is okay. I've been at many crossroads in my own life where I felt the pain of why. Nobody is exempt from that. Nobody is. I believe all of us in here have our own personal whys that cause deep-seated pain. But like our scripture read earlier, it says, Trust in the Lord with all of your heart, except when things aren't going too well. And that's not what it says. Let me rephrase that. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, unless you really don't feel like it. Unless it hurts too much, then don't worry about it. No, it says trust in the Lord with all of your heart, even when you don't understand. In fact, it's more important to follow God when you don't have all the answers than it is when you do feel like everything's going great. God solidifies relationships with His children most during times of trial, tribulation, agony, and pain. No question about that. God seals us with the Holy Spirit and our relationship with Him, whether we believe it or not, whether we feel it or not, is growing during these times of tribulation. So, number one, please ask. Don't, don't hesitate to ask God, why is this happening? Or why did I do that? Or why do I feel this way? Or why can't I break this or that happen? Why? Or why did that have to happen to my parents? Or why did that have to happen to my sister? Or why did that baby die? Why couldn't my grandmother live just a little bit longer? I didn't have a chance to say goodbye. And we say, Lord, why? So it's okay to let go. Remember that teenager I was talking about earlier? She got pregnant when she was 17 by a man who was in her 40s. <laughs> That's tough. That's really tough. Come to find out, she never even told him. You see, she was sent away to the home. She had the baby. She came back. And for the rest of her life, she probably had to deal with why. And she probably still wonders about her little baby why. But I've got some good news for you today. I've got an update on that little baby why. You see, that little baby why right now, he's all grown up. And that little baby why is married to a beautiful Filipino woman. Mm -hmm. And that little baby Y has two precious little girls. And here's the most beautiful part of the story. She screams out why she's talking about me. You know what that means? That means God has her why all under control. More importantly though, people of God, God has your why, whatever it is, He has your why all under control. No question. No question about it. By the authority of God's Word, I promise you that God has your why, your pain, He has it all under control. Let's bow our hands. Our Heavenly Father, we love you and we praise you. And oh God, we worship you in times of tribulation and in times of prosperity, in times of hurt and pain, and in times of joy and gladness. Lord, it is in you that we live and move and have our being. And so we submit ourselves once again anew to you this day in this church. We give up the pain, we give up the questions, and we give them all to you. We will not get stuck and get bitter, but we will move forward triumphantly as a people. And we thank you so much for your forgiveness and your grace and your power. It's in Jesus' precious, wonderful, saving name that we pray.